Detta är den ukentliga nyhetssändningen från Europa. Every day they used to be business sitting there for magic potions destroying me friends stealing his So there we go, Sean. That was uh, John Doe, and that was some fascinating insight into uh, Japanese culture—not just the, the nuclear aspect, but the, but the culture in general, and uh, especially uh, when it comes to uh, sex as well. So I'll tell you what—what um, what an interesting man. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he covers a wide variety of stories, and you know, he's uh, he's definitely a man who's been uh, taken on a lot of research. In my, uh, from my understanding of him, I've known him for many years now, and uh, you know, he's a uh, he's a contentious but um, but a hardworking uh, blogger, basically. And uh, yeah, I've uh, I'm, I've certainly posted up some of his videos in the, in the over the years. So I'm getting ready to bring Liam in here now. So I'm just gonna uh, 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 make sure <laughs> your your radio radio. Okay. Well, I was uh, just very off. quickly. Sorry. Yeah. No. Carry on. Carry on. Yeah, I was going to quickly just mention uh, uh, Mr. Roach uh, uh, Roachford, um, who we who we did the interview with. Uh, well, we did it with with his friend. Uh, but he's uh, he's basically managed to get a couple of microbiologists on board who want to do some testing of the water that he's concerned about. And um, and he also got onto a local newspaper as well, which means he can now get onto radio stations, mainstream radio stations. So um, uh, well done to everybody, and it wasn't just us, but many people that uh, gave him support. Uh, and of course, he was on a hunger strike. He stopped that, and he's uh, recovering. So all, all all is well. It's uh, it's done its job. And I have to apologise to President Higgins who, uh, for uh, saying that he wasn't going to do anything. I think the fact he phoned them on a Sunday. Uh, probably helped make the difference between the mainstream taking his uh, story on. So, uh, sorry about that, President Higgins. I do yeah. apologise. And we promise not to make any more leprechaun jokes again, don't we, Sean? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I've got to try and add Liam in here now. And uh, so, um, for people out there who are wondering who Liam Heffernan might be, Liam Heffernan was one of the Shell to Gas uh, Corrib oil protesters who was up. In Castlebar Court there last week, uh, alongside uh, Jerry Burke. Uh, do we have you <coughs> online, Liam? I think so. Ah, welcome, and your sound is wonderful. And welcome to European News Weekly from myself, Jimmy Hagen, and from Sean McGee. Sean, do you want to say hello? Hi, hi Liam. Well done for your uh, your win in the court last week, and uh, I'm glad to see it's the story is starting to get some traction. Yeah, big time. I was. Um our legal team was amazing. Like uh, because of previous cases, we were able to get senior counsel on, involved, and um, yeah, but both were just you know fantastic at getting uh, putting the story in context and uh, you know getting it across to the, the jury, uh, even against kind of the judge disallowing uh, you know plenty of other evidence that we wanted to bring. Right. Well, so, we're noticing some serious allegations coming out at the minute. Boom. <laughs> just like it's like kaboom moments, like you know. <laughs> Who would imagine, like, uh, Gardy getting uh, backhanders? Yeah, yeah, well, if you're down here, it's um, part and parcel with uh, life, really. Um, I guess when a big multinational comes to town, it's their MO. Um, you've seen it uh, since the beginning of the oil and gas industry, uh, dating right back to, uh, you know, Standard Oil, where they were done for antitrust laws and uh, all sorts of stuff, and it continues. Um, Shell always try to avoid litigation, uh, so that it never gets the um, the, the the legal um, life that it needs. Um, um, yeah, and of course, in the case we had a situation where uh, two members of OSSL, a company that was employed by Shell to basically supply small equipment to uh, to the workers there, but uh, they also had access to a two million euro uh, slush fund to basically bribe people and uh, part of that was at one stage they bought uh, 25,000 euro worth sterling uh, of um, alcohol for the Gordie uh, in 2008. 
stunning. And this is the sort of thing we've been uh, hearing in uh, Japan and in America with the BP Gulf oil spill. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's money talks, you know. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, um, with the BP Gulf oil spill, we, uh, we, we were talking with Charles Williams Diggs, an uh, independent journalist who has, uh, does uh, uh, articles in the Bologna.org, apart from others. Um, he was saying, basically, that uh, activists there have been and are still being harassed. One was even run off the road. Um, <coughs> would you like to give us some sort of, uh, see if there's a connection between uh, that type of scenario with uh, BP and uh, this situation with Shell? Well, yeah, well, of course, like Shell, uh, with their Nigerian operations, um, had uh, eight activists um, uh, basically hung at their behest. Um, uh, the, the, basically, it's Ken Sarwio is uh, the key name there uh, for people to look up uh, in, into. But, um, yeah, they, they were just framed. Uh, Ken, Ken Sarwio was the peaceful side of it, but out of... The you know the huge disaster that was caused by Shell there, um, resulting in them having to pay a ten percent of a five hundred million job uh, cleanup job uh, that will take over thirty years. Um, yeah, they they basically the, the, you know the evidence was very weak and uh, ended up that uh, Ken and the rest of them were uh, tried and uh, yeah then executed. And Shell could have intervened because they have intervened in other cases in in that area, but didn't. Um, yeah, as for intimidation of of uh, protesters on this side of the the shore, um, like you know the the, the locals have su- suffered the whole decade of all sorts of um, of, of malicious um, uh, tactics, um, you know, for you know for, from uh, you know different types of bribery and coercion and just generally having their their good name denigrated in the media. Um, personally, now I haven't actually been uh, sent a horse's head yet, though. Right. Well, that's good news. Well, n- <laughs> nine, 1996, I believe, is the the date to bear in mind. This is when it all began for for the people of Ahus, wasn't it? Uh, 1996. Would that be correct? Well, yeah. Back then, they thought it was good days were on the way in. Uh, that Shell and the government worked together to provide, uh, you know, the you know to, to 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 exploit the resource in a safe and consensual way. But right from the get go. Um, Things didn't go that way. Uh, Shell entered people's land without permission. Um, when people gave out about it, they were um, they were belittled. Uh, when they lodged complaints, they were ignored, and eventually leading to the jailing of the five, the Rossborough Five, in, uh, in two thousand and five. Oh, indeed, uh, that it's it's terrible. Like you know, as uh, as I've been looking at this story for the last number of weeks, I, I, I was coming across some interesting transcript from what was coming out in the court in Castlebar. Now, one of the gentlemen who was given evidence, uh, he <coughs> was he. Uh, I'll see if I can pull pull the titles up. Like, but um, he, he was given evidence. He was the man, gentleman that brought the alcohol from the north of Ireland down to the Gardaí in uh, Bell Mullet, I believe. Now, he was told... <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a very, very kind word. I think the word you... <clears throat> what, what word was you... Can we use the... Dodgy, no, we can't use dodgy words in this show, but he was told to go back quick. There's 300 guards here, and, and you know, there's no way that amount of alcohol is going to settle or calm 300 guardies. So, um, could you fill us in more. on a little bit of this story? Because it's it's a, it's it's astounding. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd only actually met the lads um, on the day that they arrived over to give evidence. Um, but uh, you know, I'd heard a good bit about them before now. Um, <coughs> the whole story is basically that um, yeah, you know, when they had uh, they they bought a certain amount of alcohol um, at the request of and his name uh, uh, now I'll find it here in a second. But um, Mr. Rooney, we'll, we'll Mr. Wonder- Rooney from Down Patrick, was it? Yeah, well, that that was one of the guys working for us as well. Yeah, yeah um, but yeah. basically, a, a head um, construction manager basically uh, had we had given them the order to get some drink, and then um, Desmond Kane. Um, Desmond Kane. Desmond Kane is the the, the, the main guy. Um, All right, right. I'm with you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, they they bought the the load of booze, but um, told to yeah get more because there's three of the guards down there, and um, so they went up to Northern Ireland again. Uh, the, the, the whole joke is that it doesn't look like Shell are going to pay any tax in Ireland <laughs> even on the, the alcohol for bribes. Um, uh, yeah, and brought it down, some down to Belmullet Guard Station, but a third went to Belmullet Guard Station, and then two thirds went, they went to Athlone Guard Station. But uh, before they got there, they got a phone call to meet them at the bypass, and that the, the a guy, they're not sure who was, uh, collected the, the alcohol off them. 
um, then at, at that stage as well. Now, yeah, it's, now, it's, it's, it's utterly ridiculous, but now, come here. Uh, they, they set it under oath now, so it's it's out there, and if the shell and the guards don't actually press charges against them, um, you know, it, it stands as, as the truth. Oh, it stands as truth, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it hasn't been rebutted, it stands as truth. But uh, one thing that got my curiosity is, like, what is a consignment of alcohol... Why is a consignment of alcohol going to a sub-aqua group, like a, a, a guard, guard sub-aqua group? That, I just said, well, what's a sub-aqua group got to do with all this? Well, yeah, during that period, the solitaire, um, this massive ship uh, was in the bay uh, trying to lay the pipeline and the Navy were called in to stop the protesters in canoes um, for, for, from blocking the work. So I guess they felt that they'd done their bit as well. Um, yeah, actually, another quote that never came out um, in the trial was that uh, one of the guys was actually on the ship when the captain was, at one point, people were kind of discussing turning the ship around. And um, I'm not, not sure now if it was the captain or if it was someone high enough in authority working for Shell that was also on the boat. But um, he, he basically said it would cost more to, to, uh, to turn the boat around than it would if they to just run through a protester. So, again, showing that the, the price of life... And, um, isn't valued very highly in uh, Shell's books when uh, when they have all the, the cash. Yeah, it's astounding, like, you know, the, the lack of there, respect. There's a video actually online as well of um, one of the diggers uh, dumping gravel on one of the, the people in canoes. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what it's under, but if you put in um, Solitaire and uh, 2008 or so, so something like that, and, uh, well, it, it's, it's fa fairly widely available, so it, you just put in, yeah, protester, rocks, dumped, Bay or something like that, I guess, and you, you'll find it pretty handy. But yeah, yeah, radioed from the, the coastline. Okay. So it just really shows they are the complete. And again, of course, the Navy were there. The complaints were lodged to, to GSOC and nothing ever came of it. Like. Right. I, I picked up on a particular comment which was made, uh, 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 Mr. Rooney, right? Mm. And he was, uh, he, was, <clears throat> he was given evidence and he claimed he was a witness to a protest in uh, uh, Paul Thomas. Pier on the yep. 11th of June 2007, he was delivering a porta cabin. Now, he described mm -hmm. the day as the worst day of his life. Protesters mm -hmm. were climbing on the machinery, and Mr. Rooney claimed that Superintendent Joe Gannon, who was in charge of policing, said to him, I want to drive the feckers, in his own word, uh, mm -hmm. protesters into the sea. And I just thought, what is, you know, is this, is this, is this superintendent? On steroids, or is he just all? Is is he just had too much drink? Mm. Yeah, well, well, many. I, I wasn't actually around on that day now, but um, oh. many people said that the, the guards would be stinking to drink quite often. And uh, one time, uh, seven of them had to be actually uh, taken off duty because they were just flailing drunk. <laughs> like, you know? oh, oh, yeah, man. like because. Yeah, like you know, I have a lot of respect for the guard in general. I have many friends that are within the force, but um, the kind of people that w w would take up the um, the the job down here uh, seem to be ones that were they would they call it the golden mile and all that. Like just just looking for overtime and stuff of that. Like for for whatever personal reasons, but um, generally you know, the guard wouldn't want to police their own people in in such a way. So. Um, yeah, yeah, sh shocking enough stuff. Yeah, on, on that day as well, uh, I'm just looking at the, my notes here now. It was actually uh, Connor Byrne, a senior pipeline engineer, that um, was meant to have given the order first to uh, uh, in 2005 to just to develop the store of Alcock, and then in 2007 was when the, the large delivery when there was one large delivery of six grand's worth, and and then later in 2008 there was the 25 grand's worth. But um, yeah, they, 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 that uh, Ollie Murray. Who was the in charge of um, <clears throat> the the shell side of things on the day? Said that Joe Gannon is the man in charge, and that uh, he needs to be protected at all costs. Uh, he's our man on the inside, or something like that. Oh, that that's right. I made note of that little comment. Is right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> and it says, ah, can't, I, I won't be able. But it is like you know the, uh, what you're saying is true because it it was released through the journal. Ie basically mm. that comment so you know the, i don't doubt what you're saying there um mm. in in terms of the legal case I, I think the biggest question and what i want to know is how did you manage to get a jury trial how did you end up like getting <clears throat> a proper lawful trial in this country when most trials are usually summary um summary sentences yeah. that, that that's yeah, 
Yeah, well, but basically just by knowing that we were right overall, like it was obviously a big risk because um, we we were it was meant to be heard in the yeah the lower uh, uh, lower courts and this, 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 yeah the, the district court or whatever of that. But um, myself and Jerry decided to uh, waive that right and push it forward into a, a jury trial, um, which would have meant five times more trouble if we'd lost. But um, we were confident enough that uh, when people hear the whole story, that. Uh, that 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 side with us, um, and then there were other cases of people that had been arrested on the same day, and they uh, decided to do their defend themselves and do their case through Irish. So a judge was sent down um, to Bell Mullet to hear their case, and during that, there they made submissions the, for us kind of to have get senior counsel on our case, and yeah, that, that had a knock on effect. So we were able to get senior counsel, barrister, and a solicitor, and um, so that made all the difference having a really decent uh, representation. Well, uh, I've got a little question. Um, it's mm. it's just a slightly different slant with the with the police. You know, from what you're telling me, it does seem like there was a, a serious case of over policing, um, and you know that would lead to boredom and beer drinking mm-hmm. uh, because there wouldn't be too much going on. And it seems yeah. like the security companies were beating up the farmers and that kind of thing that we've heard. Mm. Um, so, so do you think that's a fair comment that there was just massive over policing off that site? Yeah, yeah, you know, well, again, I guess they would need it at some points. Um, but yeah, as you say, yeah, there'd be a lot of, uh, there's, there's a good uh, one, a uh, guard or summer holiday, if you type that in on YouTube, and it's uh, videos or uh, shots during 2008, and it's uh, uh, set to the soundtrack of uh, We're All Going on a Summer Holiday, and it's uh, just all the guards just hanging around with their, their hats off, lying in the fields <laughs> and all that, and people have edited it together, so it looks like a holiday uh, video. Like, But yeah, I know, pretty absurd stuff, like, you know, but, but it, yeah, again, you know, because if good people are put in bad situations, eventually you know, some kind of cognitive dissonance, I guess, develops, and the only way that they can justify their actions is to make joke of jokes of it. And uh, another thing that came up in the trial was the rape tape, of course, where um, a superintendent and two guards were uh, caught joking about raping uh, female protesters, which, uh, like you know, isn't isn't funny at all. Um, oh my God. But but again, kind of just shows their their mental state um, and stuff of like that. And um, you know, in the end, with that as well. They didn't get reprimanded in, in any sense and one of the guards actually ended up working for uh the security company after he retired you know like this is it's, it's yes it's, it's it beggars belief really but um, yeah um it, it, in a sense though uh, in a little bit of a follow-up to that journal e article I, I was noticing claire daly says gardia carb gas site are the hired hands of shell right so, um, Claire Daly has backed the call for an independent inquiry into the policing of the Corrib Gas Project in County Mayo. A range of individuals mm-hmm. and organisations, including politicians, human rights organisations, guard whistleblowers, academics and activists, are supporting the call for a public inquiry. Now, she was speaking in the Dáil, and uh, uh, Miss Daly said that the, uh, the continued intimidation and harassment of the local community by Shell needed to be investigated. Now... Our, our, our good buddy, Mr. Kenny, stated that the alleged harassment was not being reported by local people, adding that he knew most of them. Um, and, and he went on to say, imported serial protesters caused the trouble. <laughs> what a prick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know he's an absolute dick. Like, um, he, he visited the Rossport Five in jail and he actually... Um, you know, you could forgive him because he's such an Egypt, like you know. But the effect on them was, you know, you know, quite scary. He he actually said to them, and it's in the the Rossport Five um, book, uh, our story, uh, that he said to them that uh, life is cheap, and that um, uh, nowadays, and that uh, you could get a guy from Dublin to take someone out for five hundred to a thousand euro. And then that was also stated on on, uh, on the witness box um, oh by uh, Billy Cardoff, one of the Rossborough Five. Yeah, he literally actually threatened. Um, the, yeah, well, like, he didn't threaten. You know, he just said it in passing, like or whatever that. But um, yeah, like that's you know, he's he's uh, you know, his job is to be able to talk to people and should know the value of his words. And uh, I wouldn't say anything really by accident. So. You know, I imagine. Yeah. You know, well, that's probably the, that's Liam. Probably that's probably the reason why he doesn't make too many public appearances at uh, never, on TV yeah. for interviews and stuff because he's uh, a little bit of a live wire. Then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I was a man from my own town as well. Like, and uh, I still remember being about um, twelve or thirteen, and he'd just come to open the the primary school, the new primary school that I went to, 
Um, we, we finally got a building, like you know, since the 80s, it had just been uh, port cabins, um, and uh, you know, completely set up by one, one lady all herself, and everything like that. Got very minimal funding, so finally he rides in on his white horse, opens this new you know school that was needed for 20 years, and everyone's like patting him on the back. But uh, as soon as he walked by, they were like, "Oh yeah, he's such a gobshite, like you know." <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering, like, what is the politician like? You know, what is this? The, these creatures that <laughs> like walk around, you know. He didn't build anything. He didn't lay lay a brick like yet. He gets all this respect um, mm. and and stuff like that. So I, I'd say at this stage his mind's completely melted. And he's no more than a, a, a just a, a talking device for whatever business pays him the most. And uh, Shell probably have paid a good bit. Yeah. So, do you want to steer this uh, this conversation, Sean, a little bit? Um, I've been hugging the uh, I've been hugging the conversation so far. So, oh, you've done some great questions. As I'm sitting here going, "Wow!" Um, I mean, is is there any other little bits in the in the court case that we're not hearing about? You know, we're only getting the <coughs> the, the the police drinking beer story, which seems a bit a uh, bit tame. But we're we're aware. That there has been violence with the security companies, and uh, there has very likely been hacking and uh, uh, sort of surveillance uh, by by the security company that was also surveilling the water protesters. Um, just putting two and two together here, you know, more than evidence based. Uh, but but uh, what was your sort of feedback on that? You know, was did you know people where there's been uh, certain stories or, or things that would make you wonder uh, to to your Privacy and, uh, and human not wonder rights. like it's yeah no like um during the trial um when we showed video that or when Shell showed video from their compound uh, and the camera panned across the the, the landscape uh, areas were blacked out um, and basically areas covering where people's houses were and that all came because of the fact that uh, at different stages during the campaign then cameras were being used to spy on people's homes um, at one stage. Uh, I forget which local it was, but he was down on the beach with his kids and he turned around and he noticed that uh, there was a couple of the IRMS security firm uh, pointing their cameras right down at the beach and filming them, you know, so, you know, the, you know the, yeah, like, you know, there's been all sorts of, of crack like that. As for, well, actually, yeah, and then, then another lady told me that before she actually caught the head of security in her house and ever since then she locks her doors and... Uh, you know, many a time you'd be cycling around here at night, and cars start following you slowly, and stuff like this. Like, yeah, I, I don't think they're like you know they're too stupid to be really that malicious. But uh, overall, yeah, there's been huge level of 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 um, intimidation, and but, but because of uh, just an, uh, surveillance and stuff like that. Um, but but yeah, I, I think think like you know, some of the bigger, broader things. Uh, one of the things that struck me the most about the trial was that the very first uh, witness that Shell brought was a, a Texan named Drew Dixon, who uh, was head of of safety and construction for the Carb Gas Pipeline, and uh, stated that the book stops with him if anything goes wrong. Uh, yet he has no qualifications, only a couple of courses in his own words. And uh, when we put it to him. Um, had he heard about the Niger Delta disaster, where, as I said earlier, about the 30-year mm -hmm. cleanup and uh, the eight activists killed and all, so all that, he just all right out said, no, he never heard of it. Um, just well, well curiously enough, like, Liam, we were actually discussing this very topic uh, earlier on in the show with Kevin Hester on the Extinction Report. It's just, again, synchronicity, Sean. Here we go, and uh, we've got the same topic brought up twice in the one day. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the interesting thing with, uh, with, with, with the situation we've seen is, and something we got to with uh, Charles's uh, interview, was the fact that, that they always target local communities and they, they manipulate them in the same way, using the same sort of uh, group psychology on a small eco area. So they did it in Japan, uh, from my research. They did it in, uh, in America, in Louisiana, for uh, um, a, a Charles's research. And it certainly sounds like they're using the exact same techniques to put the frighteners off on people so that they wouldn't participate in activism. Uh, mm -hmm. And these sort of following you around was the exact same thing happening in Louisiana and is happening even today. Uh, it, and there was more violent stuff and uh, a lot of other things going on as well. But we did pin it down to this local uh, community base. Because they're slightly isolated, the corporations, the big uh, PR corporations like WPP, the security uh, companies that they employ or uh, help to uh, facilitate, uh, basically all come together and operate on that community um, in a big sort of uh, well-planned sort of uh, 
sort of disaster management uh, uh, sort of uh, mm. plan, or you know, and it's something that we see all over the world. The same companies, the, the same type of security companies, are all involved to do these specific things. One is definitely to harass people. Uh, two is to disrupt activists between, you know, what's happening between them by messing with their communications uh, and disinfo and all these other things. So it, it's been very interesting talking with you about this, and it really does bring to light that that is going on in in Ireland. Stunning. Uh, to you, Jimmy. Oh, I, I was wondering, is Liam still there? I never thought of checking. Did uh, did did Liam uh, fall off the call? I'm oh, back, I'm back now. I think, yeah. Oh, okay, no, no. So I was just checking yeah. there. I see you're back there. Now, did, did you did you pick? Did you hear everything that Sean was saying there? I just lost the end of it there now. He's, oh, okay, um, okay. Do you do you want to no, respond so, well, to any? I was any... just rounding up with with uh, the fact that that they they're always targeting small communities. You know, whether they're Shell or BP or Tepco. Uh, they they use WPP and uh, you know G4S and uh, um, you know the the Irish version as well. IRMS uh, is it? Yeah. So yeah, they, they, they actually that, that was another thing in relation to the security that came out. Uh, uh, that one of the guys that worked on the project was killed in Bolivia by the the police there, um, because he was or by by their special forces because he was part of a coup to overthrow the government or kill the president or something like that. Um, did you hear about this? Like, yeah. oh, we didn't. No, no, no. No, yeah, yeah. Um, again, his name's gone out of my head, but um, I'll, it might come to me now in a sec. But uh, yeah, yeah, like um, he himself and two other guys um, uh, that also both, both worked, I think, with IRMS. Uh, yeah, we're in Bolivia and uh, where Morales had nationalised a pipeline that Shell had a 25% uh, share in. Right. And yeah, and yeah, he he had a, the guy actually had his own website where he was selling um, kind of fascist badges with a uh, kind of celebrating the the 2008 uh, solitaire um, uh, job or whatever of that for people um, and and some workers on the site would have been wearing these kind of you know fascist design kind of um, uh, emblems um, you know so yeah, like yeah they they really they know how to pick them. Um, yeah, 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 so, yeah, and, and yeah, and sorry, as well, Jim Farrell, the, the head of IRMS and the Seneca Group, um, also it was revealed during the trial that he had. I think that's actually in some of the uh, transcripts uh, that are online that he had. Um, he was, you know, a special, uh, uh, special, special forces or whatever they called uh, the Rangers, and that, um, yeah, you know, that he he'd done all sorts of uh, hot missions, like not not peacekeeping missions in. Uh, in uh, some part part of Africa, um, where where they actually had an array of weapons was his uh, term at their disposal to do you know incursions. And these guys are here on our soil. Uh, this, this is astounding, really. This is astounding. I think um, I think the mainstream media should be picking up on this case big time, and yet they're only just scratching the surface of it there by a, a little article. And I'm just looking here at a, one of the comments, like a, in a statement regarding the allegations made by Mr. Kane and Mr. Rooney in court, Shell stated that there was no substance to the allegations, right? <laughs> so um, it's just ironic how they can just fob uh, a f a fob these testimonies from people off like and just say there's no substance to it you know but I, I'm sure like we'll be hearing more about this as the as the months progress yeah well that's it hopefully anyway um, yeah we're, we're hoping to kind of put together a new kind of uh, campaign strategy um, you know, not really particularly even focusing on all the the controversy that's gone in the past, because really, you know, what you what you did then doesn't really matter. So it's what you need now. So I, I'd be glad if Jim Farrell or any one of the the Gordy would decide to see the wrong in their ways and you know tell the truth about their actions and then work for, you know, for for the good of the nation. You know. Um, well, as we uh, as we sort of there. like revealed earlier on, the Gardaí are under gag orders and and there's huge fines mm. and possibly seven years in prison if they speak out against the force. Uh, so um, it's a it's a kind of like a, any 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 Garda who is of the of a, in in a right state of mind and does want to do the right thing. Uh, there's not much incentive there to do the right thing because you could be going down for quite some time. Yeah, I actually didn't know that. You know, uh, yeah, that that's. 
terrible really isn't it like 75 yeah. well, was that what i said there earlier on Sean? 75000 euro fine for any guardy who speaks out uh, to a journalist or anything like that and uh, it, i thought so yeah, yeah I, I can't remember exactly but yeah, yeah 75000 yeah, euro or 7 years in prison so it, i i can imagine for anybody who does want to do it it's a scary position to be <clears> in completely and you know you, if you join the force here you kind of you hope that your, the orders you get will be good orders and you know you have to follow follow them orders then so and um, you know they I, i'm sure they find themselves in pretty bad positions all the time really like um so i have a lot of sympathy for them because they are sticking their neck out in the first place to 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 you know we're, we're the ones who want the police force you know so we get what we, if we give power to people uh, generally you know absolute power and all that kind of crack uh, gets abused and stuff so it's very very hard though to have a sympathetic view to the Gardaí when you trace the story back about what happened in who's there um, back all the way from 1996 and when you hear stories of old women being dumped into drains and uh, mm. down the side of drains six foot deep and ended up <clears> in <throat> briars and and possibly drowned and it's very very hard to be sympathetic to to uh, a, a force in light of that you know mm, yeah like it is of course but and you know, it's, it's easy for me to say because I chose to kind of come down here and uh, protest against it. So I was like, you know, before I came, I, I decided like, yeah, I guess I'm willing to get arrested for it and was you know, mentally prepared in that kind of way. I'm a young fellow without any, um, res you know, real responsibilities or anything like that. So uh, a lot harder if you're a family person uh, that's built your home here and has nowhere else to go. Um, of course, then, you, you know, the, the whole effect is going to be so much more palpable and harder to uh, to, to take, like, you know, because it's trust upon you. But for me, it was a choice in a lot of ways. Um, even though, of course, no one really wants to get themselves into these situations. But when things have gone this bad, it kind of, you kind of, um, you, you need to. But uh, I, I don't know, there, there was a father, Michael, down here actually this evening uh, as part of an AFRI uh, event. And he was talking, he had both his hands blown off um, by a letter bomb sent to him um, in South Africa um, when he, as he was working as a as a priest uh, d down there. And um, yeah, like he, he talks about forgiveness, but only if those that have hurt you seek forgiveness and that but for you to be able to be prepared in your head to give forgiveness when they do seek it uh, stops that kind of toxic uh, build up within you uh, of hate and uh, the negative spiral of emotions that go along with it so you know that the people yeah, have been through a lot but they're, they're learning and they're you know they're staying strong and it's an amazing sense of humor and and everything like that but uh, i think it's yeah up to the rest of us they're looking in from the outside to, to come and give support and solidarity and uh, and you know that's the only way things really can stop because if if you if, if you know if the environment isn't right for corruption, corruption won't won't begin. Um, I've agreed. Um, I have to say, in terms of the media, um, now you're very you're very uh, clear, uh, and you've got a great uh, sort of um, uh, sort of communication abilities. Has, has any of the press contacted you at all? Uh, well, Lorna Siggins, like, you know, we've been chatting throughout the whole thing and she's the reason that Anton McNulty um, was actually there to report for the Mayo News and for, well, he might have been there for on behalf of the Mayo News, but I think it was mainly uh, the fact that she asked him to attend uh, that he was there. But um, other than that, like, you know, no more than the, the guards, uh, they, they just find themselves within a system that doesn't reward this sort of uh, thing. So... Um, yeah, no, there, there's been very little media coverage. Like, um, yeah, you know, the, you know, it was a fairly landmark trial with loads of ups and downs and stuff of that. You know, you'd imagine that, we, you know, at some stage we thought your RT would be outside at the the at the, the court courthouse steps, but um, no, nope, no, no sign, you know, of them. Um, I guess we're a small country, easily corrupted, um, and we've seen you know different uh, publications. You know, they, you know, when they carry an advertisement for Shell, you know, the you know that that's that that means that they they they're getting funding from them and most of them live on a shoestring budget anyway. So, well, um, the, me yeah. the mechanism is basically that WPP LLC or Ogilvy and Maher is one of their sub uh, units, and uh, uh, it's Burston and Muller, uh, which is another one of their sub units, and this uh, Irish security company are all part of a task force employed by Shell to keep control. And of course, WPP you now they've got employees like uh, Tony Blair. Um, and they they help to cover up BP Gulf oil <laughs> spill and the Fukushima disaster. They yeah. come in with a well-oiled uh, machine, and it generally stops uh, articles coming out in the papers. Um, and oh, so yeah. there is a great pressure there. 
that's how the pressure is put on the media, as well as uh, security companies tapping their phones and letting them know they're there. So that's the pressures on the reporters. Um, uh, yeah, to, look into that. To, yeah. And, uh, and it, so it's WBP is the WPP Whiskey Papa Papa, and then LLC. Um, and if you were to type them in and BP Oil Spill or uh, Fukushima, you'd probably come across articles that explain how that uh, how that actually how they connect in. And uh, yeah, Charles actually, Wood I... sorry, just say sorry, no, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I, I can I can send you some links if you're interested. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. No, I, I'm just saying. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, that Common Purpose group that were going around there a few years ago, uh, speaking to. Uh, I, I know they were in, in England anyway, primarily, but uh, I'm pretty sure I heard that they were in Ireland as well with their kind of a neurolinguistic programming courses, um, where they, they'd sit guards down for the day um, for first yeah, half of the day. A, very boring. This is a bit bigger than that. This is uh, yeah. WPP. They're the world's largest PR company, and since 2008, they've made more money. Most PR companies would go bust in a recession. Uh, mm -hmm. This this one got bigger because it does government propaganda. Basically, uh, it is the propaganda propaganda arm of the uh, of the government uh, in anything they want to promote, or whether it's a, a referendum like in Scotland. Um, you can see how the media was controlled, and it was controlled by WPP because they pay money to the newspapers uh, for advertising, and they can withdraw that money and put pressure on editors uh, in terms of uh, uh, litigation um, uh, to stop stories coming out and to stop reporters reporting on specific stories as well. So, uh, but I'll, I'll send you the links. There's quite an interesting bit of background. I uh, think yeah, Donald. Do you know Donald O'Kelly? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, good mate. He's, he's, yeah. He spoke, he's my only witness that spoke on my behalf. As in I, I, sent, I, sent, I sent him a lot of links uh, and he's looking into them about WPP and the Shell, uh, the Shell Action Group. Okay, right. so he's, he's got all those links. I, I don't know if you want to hit base with him. Uh, I think he's researching yeah. himself. Yeah, correct, yeah. Yeah, because his, his play was amazing. Um, if, if, people, you know, if people get a chance to catch it, Fanula Boo, it really uh, puts the whole story in, uh, in in one half hour or an hour and a half kind of piece uh, with a really nice kind of uh, spiritual, um, mythological kind of slant on the whole thing. Uh, yeah, it's a really talented playwright. Yeah, it was quite, we, we, it was quite interesting. Oh, so I was just going to quickly say, we, we left um, uh, a link to Donald O'Kelly's Facebook um, on the europeannewsweekly.wordpress.com website and we'll have links to uh, all the people that we've had on this uh, on this show as well um, if they want um, on that actual site as well so just sorry Jimmy no it's okay no I was just uh, I was just remembering there uh, because we had Donald on last week and he was telling us how he performed a play outside the uh, outside the yard there on a house for uh, for the benefit of the uh, of the shell uh, team there i just thought mm. that was a, i thought that was a beautiful touch were you there in attendance on that day i, I was indeed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it started with a play and ended with a picnic and uh, <laughs> somehow in between we caused 150,000 euros worth of damage <laughs> oh right okay so that was that was the day it all happened basically that was mm -hmm. the day that yourself and jerry decided to uh, go inside sure. was it yeah. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So how were you treated then um when uh, when they cut and on that you were inside the compound um did did were they, did they treat you fairly were they, were they rough or Yeah no what I have to say no they they were like in comparison to how they can be like um because they kind of thought they had us because you know they all had their cameras out and you know in the video um they're all gleefully going oh there is now a bit more criminal damage there's another protester uh, you know damaging this oh that's assault that's assault and um, so you know they you know they, they know that their main strength is in being peaceful as well which is <laughs> weird like you know and to make us unpeaceful so um luckily in the day now none of us did lose our cool and only you know damaged well allegedly damaged a few bits and bobs um but uh yeah, like, you know, I, I didn't know myself, like, you know, on, on the day one guy did kind of go to grab me and, you know, you get get pushed a bit by the, so some of the main guys as well. But um, no, no, they, they actually were quite calm. Like the very next day, though, they uh, stormed up uh, through a right pass right away and were literally rugby tackling people to the ground, left, right and centre. And most of that's online as well, actually. So, um yeah, like you know, they they are, they are paid brutes, like you know, ex mercenaries in general, like you know, so so you know that comes natural to them, I guess. But our look, you know, there's no point really hating, like you know, like you know, we're all here 
you know, it's one big test, really, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's very big of you, Liam. You know, that that's yeah. that's really, really big of you. Like, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting a lot of hatred and a lot of anger. But you know what? I'm actually seeing the opposite. And uh, do you know what? Fair play to you for for being so big. Ah, right. yeah. well, you're better than being small, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The humble yeah. protester. Ara, well, sure, I only got into it because you want to see the world get better, like, and there's no point in adding to it, like, you know, and even the actions on that day, it almost did protract from all the, you know, the years of good, peaceful, non-violent um, kind of stuff, um, so it was just fantastic to have a, court, uh, a you know, a jury vindicate us of, of the, our being a little bit too passionate on the day, um, once they had heard what we'd been through for the last while, so. So, um, come here, Liam, then. Your thoughts then on the outcome of the case and the gravity of the case and, and the positive outcome for the people of Ireland and the ability to to fend off these uh, attacks by uh, external corporations on natural resources. Uh, where do you see this going? Yeah, well, it's definitely given me, like, you know, yeah, this has definitely given me, like, you know, the impetus now to really believe in the people around you because um you, you you don't know if, if people have been so have their minds so addled by the mass media that they just believe in bottom line don't care about people and progress at any pace like you know all that kind of stuff but uh you know it's just shown that your of our peers completely random people um do care and like you know it only took them an hour after nine days of assault like you know of all sorts of stuff said about us it only took them an hour to decide that we were not guilty even though you know technically you know if you saw the video just the video, you would think, yeah, of course these guys are guilty of violence disorder. Like, um, so, yeah, like I, I don't know, I, I don't hold much faith in governments changing or, or any of the instruments of state changing just because you know they're in that pyramid scheme and uh, it's very hard for yeah, like if you're saying seven, seventy thousand quid just to even try to opt out, like, um, so yeah, really, it's just the people have to change. You know, people have to start caring more about yeah, themselves and then their environment and then other people. And uh, if we do that, there, there's no amount of police force that could uh, can stop us. And um, yeah, hopefully, this can be kind of the beginning of a win on our natural resources side of things, which would give us like you know the the, the unlimited kind of power to really begin to create a better country and hopefully then you know, spread that to the rest of the world. Um, we have the technology now. Uh, we have the the you know the mental ability like you know um, we we have a couple of thousand years worth of philosophy to draw on and um, you know we should be able to sit down and create a consensus driven um, a future that you know actually makes people happy and puts people you know that people that we realize that people are profit and if we could have like you know people as the key economic driver of a, a society then um, should there be no stopping us. So, uh, sorry, um, just one more question I'll let you, because we're, we're, yeah, we're sort of running out of time now quickly, but Liam, um, you're talking to two guys here probably who are of the opinion that the oil and gas probably should be left where it is, underneath the ground, and that we should be looking for alternatives. Yeah. Um, where do you stand on this on this matter? Um, well, tell you, I don't really know enough like, uh, about how oil and gas really works. I've heard that the Russians actually think that uh, gas and oil replenishes, you know, um, and, you know, you, 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 you know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to know. Like, you know, we've looked into the geology of how it works to some extent. Um, like, you know, the, you know I, I know it causes earthquakes when they try to take it out. So are we weakening the overall structure of the planet by removing it you know is it you know i look at you know i i just wouldn't know that's why i'd love if we could actually get together a team of people that do know uh, to speak in an open forum and then give us the information that we need to make an informed decision like uh, obviously like you know if we keep bloody making things out of plastic uh, we become a plastic thing and you know it doesn't bloody biodegrade like you know but at the same time uh you know it, it, it is still yeah, we're, we're, we're living off our time like it's you know we're living off the dinosaurs bones for god's sake like you know it doesn't seem like the most copped on way to be doing things like you know f like you know, I, I know people have draw, drawn up plans and um, one of the protesters paul um, paul lynch actually had, they had a great uh, energy audit for mayo and like he, he showed how you know within you know, 20 years we could build you know wave uh, energy uh, tidal energy solar energy things that could provide you know tenfold of what we need at the moment anyway and um, so, yeah, like, you know, with an eye to that and, and then, 
you know, like, uh, yeah, obviously I'd say leave it to the ground. Uh, it, it, it was... Um, I'm delighted, to hear, you say that. delighted to hear you say that. Delighted to hear you say that. Sean, over to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, at the same time, there'll be people out there going, no, but I love burning gas. Like, you know, so <laughs> I want to keep them kind of happy too, you know, but um, yeah, and like, sure, like, sure, for God's sake, we could have had the electric car 100 years ago if the uh, oil companies hadn't um, scuppered that whole thing. Like, you know, we could be bombing around in, you know, clean, fucking efficient... Um, safe like you know bubble bubbles by now like if, if oil and oil people hadn't kept us addicted to the whole damn thing like so you know the, you know there's an argument on both sides like you know but you know if we do anything by consensus then i guess it's it's, it's always going to be the right thing you know so you know, we just need a forum and uh, the mechanism that allows people to everyone to have their say and uh, hear other people and then um, you know th- then things can't go far wrong uh, well said well said mm. So, Sean, is there anything that you'd want, do you want to sort of round the evening up here? We have about, uh, well, we have 12 minutes left, like, but um, anywhere you'd like to go with the conversation? Yeah, well, actually, there's the other little bit here is another dimension to it is that you've been saying that you've been talking to people in South America and Nigeria. And, um, you know, since you got into activism, have you noticed that uh, similarities, a lot of similarities with activists around the world um, by any chance? <coughs> Yeah, well, you know, you know, you used to just watch documentaries and see black people and think, oh, there's some others, you know, or whatever that. But now it really, it actually really hurts you when you, you see the, the plight of, like, especially the Goni people. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, but sure, yeah, we're all the same, really, when uh, on some level, like, you know, in Nigeria, Shell, we're able to literally pay the police directly um, to, to do, their, do their crimes and that, uh, like, hit and run squads or something they were called and uh, you know they'd, they'd literally just burst in someone's house burn it down and stuff of that so luckily here we have a stronger and more democratic and more um, <clears throat> visual kind of uh, government that it doesn't allow that but like Shell only doing this a couple of decades ago down in Nigeria so um, they, they would if they could kind of thing um, so uh, yeah you know it's really a huge similarities between between us all. So, so, I mean, basically, is uh, my, my point would be, I, th- I think, you know, in a personal note, that, that you kind of, you kind of have grown, your worldview has grown, and and you've met really interesting people. Are, are those sort of comments you could say yes to? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, um, yeah, no, I, yeah, everyone kind of shows you yourself from a different perspective, and um, down here it's just such a diverse. Uh, bunch of people like you know people that have been all around the world and people that know every part of the day and um uh yeah and, and then i was involved with the occupied thing as well so there was a lot of uh, people that were you know very interested there and um yeah no it's, it's just good when you, when you have to work with people for a common goal i guess you get to know them a lot quicker than you would if you're just meeting them at some work you know place or, or just some you know stuff of like that so yeah no it, it definitely helps you grow as a as an individual like working in a collective okay. Well, that's, that's that's really cool. Well, it sounds like we've got to let you get on with your dinner now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, the head of the, the hostel here. Uh, okay. You know. <laughs> yeah, she's making a lot of noise. Is she giving you a hint? <laughs> she's <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Because some places get bloody internet connections. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, well, um... it's, been, it's been a nice, clear internet connection. It's been a great interview, uh, Liam. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really pleased to have had you on. Uh, do you think maybe some point in the future you might pop back on and give us a bit of an update of and uh, yeah. about what's going on. Yeah, well, we'll tonight now we have a Chelsea meeting, actually, in the next hour. Um, so then we'll be kind of discussing different campaign strategies. And, yeah, then hopefully by the 1st of August, we'll be kind of launching a new um, a, 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 a new kind of campaign, um, which will be great, yet to tell you about uh, once we kind of have it hammered in, hammered home and get some kind of consensus on it. So, um, yeah, like, you know, we're hoping to build as much... Uh, public uh, interest again in the campaign so that come uh, the next general election it's you know even Fine Gael are vying to be on our side or whatever that because the facts speak for themselves once people enough people know them they're undeniable and uh, you know maybe through getting economic justice we can get political justice and eventually the social justice that the people down here deserve. Okay, well, we're here for you if you when you when you get you want to get the word out. We'll we'll certainly put out your uh, um, uh, advertising stuff. It will be your WPP for uh, the, uh, the anti shell movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our pro people movement. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> exactly, the new PR uh, media. <laughs> yeah. So, any websites that you'd like to point people to to um, maybe sort of uh, up your campaign and uh, yeah. 
Yeah, well, well, of course, the Chelsea website really has it all. It's a treasure trove of um, of stuff. Um, yeah, that, that's all I can really say for now. I guess you know, sure, it's, it's all out there online, but um, yeah, yeah, not no new website yet. Oh, okay. so, um, I'm getting, the, I'm getting the uh, told to wrap it up now. Anyway, so uh, no worries. Yeah, Liam, uh, talking to me, Sean. Yeah, uh, it was, it's Thanks been a lot. pleasure, and uh, I'm fair play to you, my friend. And uh, you're a brave man, yourself and Jerry. Uh, you're a credit, a credit to the oh, West. Yeah. Yeah. You've both been great to interview as well. Cheers, mate. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the more they're brave, the less brave we all have to be. So, exactly. That's it, hey. Cool. Well, Gurmila. Gurmila, yeah. Slant. 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 Right. No. Um, so, I'm not sure. We're still hearing uh, Liam there. So, if you want to hit your red button there, Liam, and uh, is that. Did Liam hit the red button? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah, so. We haven't got the sounds of the kitchen anymore. Okay. Wow. I wasn't really expecting such a download, Sean. Uh, that was, uh, no. you know. Um... No, that was brilliant. And uh, I would say very quickly before we run out of time altogether, and it's kind of kind of relevant. Um, the uh, it's concerning the Dahl's criminal justice terrorist offences and amendment bill 2014. Um, and I just want to point people to. I would say it's probably uh, either Mick Wallace or uh, Claire Daly's Facebook page, and hopefully they've got a link up. I haven't checked, but they should have a link up uh, to their, their uh, discussion on, on the amendments that they wanted to have put in. Of course, the amendments didn't go through, and it means that Ireland is one of the few countries in Europe with vague uh, definitions of the word terrorist or extremist. Uh, it may well include the same definitions now, uh, uh, vague definitions that you have in England, uh, which definitely make uh, everybody who is an activist or against uh, the government uh, line and corporate line um, targets for this uh, for this uh, uh, large surveillance scheme that Edward Snowden and uh, um, Julian Assange have tried to draw us, to, uh, you know, draw our attention to. Um, so I, I don't think we've got a lot of time. Uh, I, I, I spent an hour last night read, uh, listening to it and writing down stuff. Um, but um, if you go there, you can actually listen to it for yourself, and it's very clearly put. They both make a statement, um, and the opposition didn't even bother to turn Well, one person turned up or something, uh, but nobody really turned up who could uh, respond to them, um, and it sounded like they had very little uh, support. And, you know, it, it was a, very, it's a very, very dire day for Irish uh, um, sort of... Uh, uh, privacy and uh, for you know the human rights uh, issues in Ireland uh, that our freedom of uh, speech is uh, very likely to be uh, curtailed um, and that with the uh, new calls for uh, internet uh, blocking and censorship and uh, uh, prison sentences for bloggers and trolls so um, that's all a very worrying circumstance when we're looking at what happened in the rest of Europe where all this is coming into place um, and we're seeing people being threatened with huge fines and imprisonment in Spain just for protesting. Um, it's coming to a country near us if we don't stand up to it, and uh, hopefully we'll take a, a leaf out of Liam's uh, book and we'll be able to have the strength to stand up to this system for the police as well as us um, against this corporate uh, money-back scheme that's going to rip Ireland apart and uh, destroy its human rights values and, and the constitution that it's so hardly fought, uh, so fought, hardly, hard fought for, uh, it's a constitution. So, all right, <laughs> that's my rant for the, for the minute. No, well okay. said, well said, and I, I think that's a, that's a good point to make because I think what we've learned today is that even the Gardaí themselves are under immense pressure to keep it zipped. Uh, seven and journalists. And yeah, journalists. yeah, indeed. Well, the Gardaí are, are being forced to put the journalists under pressure, and uh, and I didn't get to cover half of the points I wanted to cover today because there was I did have a sort of like a routine where we could tie it into connections with criminality. But I think as we're running out of time, I just want to put a little bit of a quick shout out to Andrew Bradshaw who has barricaded himself into his home, so he's moved back into his home, guys. Uh, there was a little article brought out there. You can find it at dw.com. Irishman takes back home after eviction so um, if you can if you're in the area um, g give Andrew a little bit of a shout out and uh, and and, sh and show your support uh, well done Andrew and uh, I hope it all goes well for you
And uh, okay. any other quick bits of news that you want to get in there, Sean? Well, I would say that uh, the Contemporary Theatre Review has put an article up celebrating Mar Margarita Darcy's theatrical activism. Uh, it's just up this week, so it goes to contemporarytheaterreview.org. And uh, you can see a picture of uh, the incredibly scary Margarita Darcy um, uh, telling every. Well, well, I don't know. She's I hope just she's not the... chanting "Come by, yeah," is she? <laughs> no, no, she's outside the Irish prison surface uh, with her fists in the air, wearing a bright red jacket. I, I, I suspect that it's probably not peaceful. Well, it might be peaceful, but um, but knowing our Margarita, she's probably got a thing or two to say to them. I would say. Oh wow, wow, wow! What a woman, though. Like you know, there we go. Like at, uh, what, how old is? Now she's uh, she she's in her eighties, is she? Oh, I've lost count. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Over yeah. eight. Yeah, yeah. But young at heart. Young, young at, at heart. heart yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. I remember hearing her on interview there on that gentleman's show. I can't remember. I never can remember his name. It just be on the David sure. Ike channel there. Like, and she was a pleasure to listen to. Really strong and a young, <laughs> a young right. heart activist. And one, one quick, you know, as we're on about Irish water. First of all, we had a thing from Air Code, and Lock 8 has a video, uh, an MP3 file, six minutes long, talking about Air Code and what a rip-off. And, uh, and Capita, obviously, behind that, another corporation. Uh, they earned $28 million for a, what is, uh, according to uh, Lock 8, a dysfunctional uh, a GPS or a postcode system. And then just lastly, for the water protesters, uh, they basically, uh, the uh, First Nations people have uh, said it's the final straw. Uh, they're breaking BC's treaty, Canada's treaty, uh, with the eight First Nations. Um, and uh, what they're doing is they're basically going to be taking the water from Canada to America and they're going to build loads of dams and destroy loads of the e ecology. And of course, if you listen to Candy's Paul last week, she was explaining to us how First Nations people do live off the land and destroying their land means they have to go to Monsanto for food and they don't want to do that. Okay. Um, and that article is in desmog.ca called Site Sea Dam is Final Straw for BC's Treaty 8 First Nations, Thursday, July the 3rd, 2014. And a I quick shout to... out here also for Vin tonight. He's got a, he's got a guest, a couple of guests, uh, Mark McCauley from 1YI and he also may have Guy Taylor. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye. So, Sean, I suggest you say goodbye also. Bye. I'll see you next week, people. Sorry about the lack of uh, outro music. I haven't got time. Cresce só dinheiro, você diz que